But if it feels more at home to be around disaster and you're feeling internal disaster, um, that's yeah, going to replicate itself externally. Here with my good friend Michael Long, and um, I've gotten him onto this Zoom with me. And he was just asking me, is this a podcast? And I said, yeah, we're going we're gonna to record it and see how it goes. So I have some kind of news to just spring on you because I wanted to get your genuine reaction and then talk okay. about it. Cool. So I'll kind of back up and, and explain everything to the folks at home watching who don't know everything that's going on. Okay. So I'm, I'm currently in Texas. I've been in Texas for a little bit. I came for a, a visit with my family. And I turned it into a nice, long, extended vacation. It's been a wonderful time to visit with my parents. And I've just been having a really, really great time being close to my family. And I hadn't been seeing them at all in like five years. And so that's a, that was a big change for me, not being in Hawaii and being over here in Texas. Here's some of the great news. I'd been setting up the business to run remote if I needed to for a while. And it turns out it worked. If the business is running remote, I'm able to keep in contact with the buyers and the sellers and, and everything's running really great with the business. And so what I wanted to talk to you about is more on the personal side of like personal development and entrepreneurship and, and some of the things that come up. So I'll tell you the story of what's going on. I won't name any names, but somebody that we know that I've had a, um, a relationship with for a long time, a romantic relationship, and that's, that's ended. So that ended uh, just before Christmas just before this trip. And um, it went pretty poorly as we've talked about. Um, and I've had a lot of, a lot of uh, just a challenge dealing with it. Uh, personally, just dealing with it. it was, it's been really hard. Uh, this is somebody that I love deeply and I, and I still love deeply. And I still care about very deeply. Um, so the new chapter of what's going on is uh, that person is not happy about it, has reached out to my other business partners and made threats of, of uh, bad mouthing and, and uh, that, that I'm going to reveal this information or say this information, pretty much lie, and say that I'm a crook and that I'm a thief and that I'm a bad person to work with and kind of crumble my reputation. And so that's something that I've been dealing with, but it's really gotten pretty, pretty intense and pretty specific lately. I've been working on this one partnership here in Texas and this is a, a main partner that I've been working with for a while. And um, this ex of mine has reached out to them and, and said, if if you don't make him call me and you don't uh, make him give me money, basically, um, I'm going to say to everyone in your contact book that he's a crook. And not only my contacts, but now threatening uh, the people that I work with. And so what I wanted to talk to you about is uh, kind of the way that I'm dealing with it. And also just kind of like a, um, not a warning, but kind of a reality check for other people that are entrepreneurs that are in the business and in any kind of business, uh, that this is what, this is part of success. This is not a, oh, this might happen. This is a feature. This is a part of what's going to happen. People that you deal with will get jealous. They will reach out and try to manipulate. They will blackmail. Um, mo money, mo problems is not just a solve. It's it's a reality. It's something that really does happen, even on the very low level. I mean, I'm not a multimillionaire, NBA star, Hollywood star that you would think of blackmail, right? I mean, this is straight up full on blackmail. If you don't do this, then I will do this to hurt you financially in the business. So I wanted to kind of spring that on you and um, talked with you about it. Cause you've been a, you know, I, I talk all the time, you're, you're a friend and a mentor and a peer and somebody I really like to run things past and talk with. Um, I should be paying you a fee to be a coach. <laughs> but- uh, Wouldn't make no, me a friend. Uh, yeah, that's right, that's, that's true. But um, I just wanted to throw that out there and kind of get some of your initial reactions and then let's talk about it a little bit. Okay. What do you think about that? Yeah, I, I think uh, at the core, pain recreates pain. And um, so 
or hurting people hurt people. You can say it a bunch of different ways, but it's, uh, yeah, it, it's hard. Um, and I, I, I think there's a bunch of different approaches at different stages and stuff like that, but it's, uh, at the core of it, I love that you're doing a good job continuing to have compassion and love for someone while they're hurting you. Um, because at the core it's, uh, so not speaking to this situation directly, but usually it'd be, if someone's acting like that, it'd be safe to assume that there's a hurt girl there at the core of her heart. That's, uh, just acting out type of a thing, uh, recreating the pain that she's feeling. Um, but yeah, I don't know any of the specific details, but definitely sucks. Yeah. It's been pretty rough. When you talk, I I think of it as like passing through the pain, like, uh, yeah, this, this, this situation specific, specifically, I feel like she's, uh, she's feeling pain. So she's passing it through trying to like diffuse it and, uh, relieve it by, uh, making me carry the burden of the pain. Yeah. It hasn't been easy dealing with it. It's just, it's just been almost every week, a re a reorganizing of my thoughts. So, uh, um, and it's like that, that's what business is. And that's what it's striving for being a better person and a higher level of an individual is I keep, I keep saying, well, uh, treating it like it's a, like it's a one-off, like it's a, it's, but it's not, it feels like it's, this is part of it. Like when, when you're hitting certain levels of achievement, it draws out. Uh, I keep using the word jealousy, but that doesn't quite feel right. Uh, it's like a, um, um, you, you kind of painting a target on yourself as, uh, I hate to get biblical or, or weird, but it, it's like Jesus was a perfect example. So even if it's just like a, even if the Bible just was, was just a story, the story is that there's this perfect example and we crucify, we kill, we tear down that stuff that's, that's better than us. That's, that's a good example for us instead of following it, you know, and, and that's, that's the growth is saying, oh, I admire that person. I've really come to that this last week. Um, I have somebody that I work with that's kind of a peer, but I really admire that person. And I've had in the back of my mind, this kind of like, oh, he's not great because of this. Oh, he's not that great. And I'm doing it myself. That's where I, that's where I see it's kind of a, a feature of becoming a better person is that we recognize that all of us do that. We, we have this kind of tendency to tear down instead of to look and admire and admiration is this kind of like a, it's like a old word. It's kind of like a, we don't think of admiring people anymore that much. You no. know what I mean? It's kind of like a, it's kind of like an old concept of uh, admiring somebody. And it means that that person is better than me. I know they're better than me. And I, and I like them for the fact that they're better than me instead of being jealous of it or, or uh, I'm trying to work through it. That's why I wanted to bring yeah. you on and talk with you about it. Yeah. I wonder how much of it comes down to personal culture too. So even uh, let's say someone comes from mainland and they're in Hawaii and they're just speaking different using just saying soda versus pop or Coke or whatever. And it's just, Oh, that person's different or weird. And it's almost like anything that uh, comes into conflict with their own personal culture, no matter how small it is, it's like, we're trying to prune it away. And if, uh, that person's identifying as the thing, it's easy to attack the person instead of whatever it is about the culture we're trying to protect for our own culture. Um, and it's, yeah, so I, I had a friend growing up where, uh, he definitely just identified as being very sad and very angry. And the more happy a person was, the more he hated them and just Mm -hmm. like would do anything he could to like, be like, okay, they're really happy. I'm going to try to find a way to really hurt them just to make them feel more sad. And it's because that's what his culture was and stuff like that. And it's it's just interesting to see all the different levels we do that, whether it's with wealth or joy or I don't know, whatever it is. Yeah. And I've I've heard a lot of guys talk about it with like, uh, like fitness. Yeah. Like they'll see somebody super fit and, you know, we start to tear them down and be like, uh, oh, well, they just, they must, uh, they're kind of a small wiener because they have to like work out to get a big chest because they're small wiener or anything, right. just like any kind of demeaning uh, thought we can have about them right? to tear them down, to make us feel on that same level. I'm sure you're familiar with that, uh, the experiment of the monkeys 
and the ladder. Have you heard about this? Mm -mm. I can't remember. I'll, I'll try to see if I can remember some of the details. Um, so these experimenters, uh, scientists, I guess, they did this experiment with these monkeys in a cage, and there was a ladder to, to get up to some fruit, bananas. And so the um, the they instead of having them be able to grab the bananas, they would get shocked at the top. And so the one would climb up, and they they would soon learn that if you climb up the ladder, you get shocked. And so pretty soon they uh, they would take out one monkey and put in a new monkey that didn't know that he would get shocked. And he would try to climb the ladder, and they would pull him down. And so uh, this this they would slowly take out the monkeys that had been shocked and add in new monkeys. And even the new monkeys that hadn't been shocked before would pull down the newer monkey, saying right. that they're, you know, bring, keeping them from the goal at the top. And it kind of goes back to what you were saying about being hurt. Like, yeah. they know that there's hurt there, so they're bringing them down and keeping them away from the goal. And eventually, they got to where they had taken out all of the monkeys who had ever been shocked. So everybody that was in there had never experienced the pain before, but they were still, even a new monkey that got put in, they would still pull them down until they were all conditioned to never climb up and get the reward, never climb up and get that, that good feeling. Right. And I feel like we kind of, we do that because I, I, I keep, the more I talk about this, the more I go, you're doing that too. You're, you're a monkey that pulls people down too. Even if you don't pull them down, in the back of your mind, you're still making excuses. Oh, well, he's only got it because his dad was rich. Oh, he's only, right. you know, whatever excuse you want to throw in there. Oh, it's only because he's so much younger and new that he seems so great. You know, I have the same success that's happening, but he's just younger. So it seems so great. That's one of the things that keeps popping in my mind right. as I'm, you know, on the, you know, I'm on the higher age of end of the age spectrum of young guys doing this. <laughs> I'm not so much a young guy doing it anymore, but that's something that he, me personally, I've noticed. I'm like, man, why do you keep tearing these guys down in your mind and saying like, yeah. they're not so great just because they're young. You're doing the exact same thing. And, and I think the big realization is that I'm one of those monkeys too. So what do I do? I've got to change that and not, not think that about other people. Hmm. Keep that out of my mind. Whenever it pops up and I think that, I'm going to say, no, it's, it's not because he's young. It's because he's really good. And now right. I, I, once I took that out, this last week has been a lot for me, a lot of that, taking out those thoughts, noticing them first, becoming aware, instead of just sleeping through it and thinking, you know, having it be a part of my mind that I'm not even realizing, I get that right. awareness and then I go, wait a minute, that's that monkey thing. That's that pulling other people down thing. Um, and so then I notice it try to take it out. And as soon as I take it out, that's when the admiration comes in. Cause I go, well, if it's not that, if it's not that, you know, he seems so great cause he's just young. Well, what is it? Oh, he has this habit that wow. I can, that I can emulate. He does this every single week that I can emulate, you know, and it's, it's a so great cool. way to, man, it, it's been good. I, I've really enjoyed it this week, being able to take out that negative part. And it allows me to look closer and say, well, what is it that I'm missing then? Because that, that does blind me. Yeah. If I just stay that monkey that says, oh, well, he's not this great because of that. I'm just using that as a phrase. Um, hey, that's, that's an easy way other people can, if you, if you notice yourself saying, they're just, they're not that great because of this, or they're only, they only seem this great because of that. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a red flag. The flag goes up that you can notice it. We can become aware of it. Hmm. And then we can take out that part, that, that negative emotion, that trying to hide behind to not admire somebody. It's like, yeah. we don't want to admire people because it seems weak. Maybe there's like a self responsibility attached to it too. So uh, if you admire them, you'd have to take responsibility for accomplishing, for stepping into the same thing or getting a similar result. But if you're not admiring them and just blame it on these external factors, then it's not your fault for your condition. Yeah. And right. so it's like using admiration to step into self-responsibility. It's like an easy hack. 
Yeah. This guy, so Tom, cool. Tom Bilyeu, he's always talking about, he says, everything is my fault. Yeah. And, and I mean, you know, Jocko talks about that too, uh, about responsibility. Everything is my responsibility. Everything is my fault. The way I feel, it's completely my responsibility. And even if it isn't, say the situation that I'm in right now, that uh, I, can, I can keep putting off the bad feelings that I'm having and saying, well, that's because she's doing this or he's doing that, or he said this, I can just relieve myself of the responsibility. And what good does that do me? People who yeah. take responsibility are the ones who uh, get the money, get the job, get the girl, whatever the reward is. People that take the responsibility are the ones who get that achievement and get that good feeling. So um, everything is my fault. I, I've, been, I've been just thinking of it that way. So good. And especially you can even take it out to the extreme. So saying right now, the world economy is my fault. Um, and it's like, oh, as soon as I start thinking like that, now, all of a sudden me taking responsibility for those types of things, I'm positioning myself to be more of a leader um, at a higher capacity. And if I'm not already taking responsibility for the things that those leaders should take responsibility for, then um why would I assume that I'm going to kind of go up the ranks with leadership or, um, yeah, growth? It really comes down to that. What, um, what uh, burden are you willing to take on? What responsibility are you willing to take on and really name it for ourselves and say, no, that's, that's me. I'm going to do that. I'm going to be responsible for that. And that's, I think that really comes down to a lot of the core of becoming a really successful person. And even if that's just, the success of I walk an hour every day to become right. more fit, um, yeah. so to take care of my own health. Um, that's taking responsibility completely onto ourselves. It seems so easy to put it, and that's where the blame comes in, you know, to put it off on something else. Oh, well, this situation, so I'm not going to go walk today. Or that situation, we blame it. We put it outside of ourselves. But keeping it within ourselves that it's, it's my responsibility. Everything is mine that that's where the ownership comes. Yeah. And the lack of excuses. Yeah. Yeah. You can't have excuses if it's all, if it's all your responsibility. Right. Even, even if it was somebody else, well, then why do you have that person in your life? That's your responsibility. Right. And that's kind of the stage I'm at now where I've, you know, ended this toxic relationship that wasn't good for either one of us, honestly, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is a short one today. I just wanted to have you on to talk about it for a little bit. Cool. And uh, do you have anything? We can we can go for a long time if you want. Do you have anything more that you want to add and put in? And I know we can kind of go off on a tangent even if you wanted. Yeah, whatever you want. Were there specific things you, you said uh, you were thinking about certain topics that you wanted to talk about um, or wanted certain reactions on specific things? Well, Are that there was any, the like, main specific one. Questions? Okay. That was the main one that it had gotten... You know, we've chatted a little bit about how it's been challenging moving away from that relationship, but um, really more about like the feature that this is a part of success and building yourself into a better person is that the people around you are going to see you doing different things. Because in order to become a different person, to become a better version of yourself, you have to change the things you do. Yeah. And the people around you have seen you do the things you do. So maybe let's go into that a little bit. I remember, well, we'll just go into some of the specifics. I remember when I first, I heard Jordan Peterson talk about cleaning up your room. And I had already been kind of like into that. Um, we'll kind of go back into my story. You know, whenever I was living in the van, we would keep the van super tidy because I was like, even though, you know, we're not making money, things are not going successful at this point in time. I don't have to act in an unsuccessful manner now. I don't have to just say, because that'll keep me in that unsuccessful lifestyle. Um, and so then we moved into a shack, you know, we moved from just a van into a shack and I had to keep the place super clean and orderly and tidy. And I remember you were talking to us one time about whenever I was keeping things tidy, I had another person in my life that would make things messy right behind me. Not even, it, it was completely my own stuff that was completely away from her stuff. And she would make it messy on purpose, like in mm. order to that, that pulling down um, vibe again. 
I remember you were talking yeah. about, say you took somebody and and uh, there was not financially successful and put them in like a mansion. Right. Then their little area kind of becomes dirty and messy. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, it's like the external always reflects the internal. And so, um, yeah, you could take someone that's very used to growing up in a really messy place and uh, immediately upgrade their housing or whatever it looks like and clean up for them. But if it feels more at home to be around disaster and you're feeling internal disaster, um, that's yeah, going to replicate itself externally. That's like that, uh, that thing about lottery winners. Yeah. You know, as soon as they win the lottery within a year, most of them are broke already and bankrupt and have way more problems than they ever had in the first place. Right. It's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. There has to be an internal. Yeah. So everything that's happening external is only a reflection of what's happening inside. So in order for us to have the rewards, have the, the success and the growth that we want, it's all about back to responsibility. I have to develop inside of me the proper, clean, good, organized self in order to have that good, rich life outside of me. Right. It's interesting looking at your um, monkey ladder example. So I've always been the personality where I won't even walk near the ladder because it might make the other monkeys uncomfortable. And so they don't even need to pull me down. Just the thought that it would make them uncomfortable. I won't go near it. And then you look at the leaders, uh, I don't know, like whether or not you like them, uh, like Elon Musk or Trump or people like that, where it's like, they don't care if other people are trying to pull them down or what people are saying about them or anything like that. They're just like, cool, I'm going to climb this ladder because I want to. Um, and it seems to be those personalities that make it to the top and not saying you shouldn't care about other people, but you should take responsibility for whether or not you're being pulled down because that's also up to you. Yeah. By even having the people in your environment that could pull you down, that don't admire success, that don't admire. Yeah. Cause you can see it. You, you can know right off. Um, whenever you're hanging out with people and you're talking with them, you hear them say kind of the stuff I was saying before, oh, that guy's only this. Well, right. he's successful for some kind of reason. And if you want to discount it, then obviously you're not taking responsibility. So let's just kind of let you go to the side and, and limit my time with you because it's not. And so that comes back to my responsibility of whether I limit my time with them or whether I let them be in my space and influence me. Right. Yeah, that's good. That that um, I'm kind of shocked by you saying that that you wouldn't even go near the ladder. But it it really uh, it makes sense. I can see it in you because you do. You're very caring. You do connect with people like immediately. Like yeah. you'll connect with somebody and you can see it. Like you really are concerned with what's going on with them. And I could see how that would make you just say, "Well, I don't even want to make them uncomfortable." by showing the success that I'm working towards. Right. Is that something you like have been working on? Um, no, I guess I didn't really realize I needed to work on it, but definitely <laughs> do. Um, and so, yeah, I guess I usually just keep the ladder private. <laughs> hey, well, that's another thing. Um, I've heard people talk about that as well. Uh, Steve Harvey talks about that. He says, don't tell anybody your dreams. Right. He says, why, why even expose yourself to that? There's, there's no need. You have your tight group. And he talks about just his wife. And he says, I have pretty much just me and my wife is the only people I tell about most of my dreams. And that's how you get them to come true. Yeah. Unless you find people that have the capacity for it. Um, because there are people out there that they'll listen to the same dream and be like, oh, it's easy. Why is it even a dream where other people would look at the same thing and be like, no, it's impossible. Don't even try. And so, yeah, it's just choosing who you share specific things with, I guess. Yeah. Back to the responsibility of who you even let into your space. Yeah. Hmm. That's become so important to me since I've been here, uh, on the mainland and with my family, you know, I didn't see them for about five years. Being over there in Hawaii, I didn't take a yeah. lot of trips over here. We just were really far apart. And being back connected with them and in their space, seeing them all the time. Um, I've been able to travel back and forth 
between different families' houses all through Texas. And so I'll spend a little time here, spend a little time there. And it's really great to connect um, back to who I've been in the past and who, who where my strong morals come from and, and where that, that, uh, that desire to climb the ladder comes from. Hmm, that's really good. And, yeah. In Hawaii, they call it the uh, ama crab. Have you heard about that? Mm-mm. Whenever they're trying to crawl out of the bucket, the other crabs will pull them back down. Got it. And it's really that same thing we were talking about, about getting pulled down the ladder, pulled back into the bucket. And um, if we never get into the bucket with the other ama crabs, I think that's a way to keep away from that. Yeah. So what's the solution to it all? Be careful who you let in your environment. And whenever we notice that, I think that's a big thing about noticing the uh, uh, pushing off admiration, like taking the responsibility and saying that person is successful because of this instead of that person is just successful because of whatever. Well, what is that whatever? What is it that they're doing that obviously it's working? Because we can tell the difference between where they are and where. So if I look and I see, I see where that guy is and I see where I am and I want to be there. Okay, well, what's the difference? What is he doing different that I'm not doing? And everything that he's doing different, everything matters. All of that that he's doing matters. Any of it that I put off and I'm like, oh, well, he's just doing, he's just got it because of this. Well, what is that? That's important. If I, if I blow that off, then that's my fault. That's my, my own fault for blowing it off and not being able to admire someone. I really like that word, and I really am going to start saying it a lot. Um, and I have been saying it recently. This is one guy in particular that's a friend of mine. I, I've been telling him, I'm like, I just, I just admire you. I, I look at the things you do. I look at the way you live your life. I look at the success that's been coming to you, and I admire the things that you do and the way that you're, you're living your life. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, it's so good to have people like that. Like you. So, so, so what about the people, uh, like you were mentioning that you're actively being pulled down the ladder right now and sabotage type of a thing. What do you do in those situations? I think it comes back to just keeping them out of your environment. You know, whenever you realize that somebody is toxic and you see it from, you know, it comes back to that was my fault. I knew for a long time that it was like that. And I thought that I could exist in that environment and not be pulled down. And I was completely wrong. I was just completely wrong. If you notice that that's, that's the way someone is, um, I don't know, maybe have some compassion and try to teach them. But to tell you the truth, you're, you're kind of like, um, you know, in lifeguarding, when you're a lifeguard, they teach you to approach somebody with your foot out towards them. Because mm-hmm. as soon as you get close enough, they'll latch onto you and they'll take you down too. And now both of you are drowning. Right. So you're not saving anybody. You're not helping yourself and you're not helping them by letting them drown you as well. Yeah. And so I think um, the solution is keep them out of your life. I know it sounds cold. I know it sounds harsh, but I mean, do you want to succeed or do you want to drown with them? Right. Like if they can't get it together and pull themselves up, you can be an example. I think that's that you can just be an example. So let's say uh, like this specific person, it's been going on for several weeks or longer. Um, now looking forward to the future, if it's still going on three weeks from now and accepting personal responsibility for that, like what are the steps of being like, okay, if this continues from this point on, it's my fault. Um, how do you, how would you go about making that switch or what needs to be set up in place for that? Like specific boundaries or conversations or what's the steps to stop it? That's a, that's a great question. I, um, I've been working on that. To, to me, it just seems like having separation and having uh, everything be separate. Um, yeah, but it's a big challenge, you know, if they want to reach out and try to blackmail and, and keep you down. I, I really don't know. Um, I mean, I've talked to like uh, an attorney. I mean, it seems kind of weird and silly to be talking about that, but it's turned into straight up blackmail. It, it'd be interesting to make this the uh, basically the main offer of your next book and just feel like, okay, like I'm going to, 
deep dive and study this and uh, whatever the solution is to make it so that people, um, I don't know, almost studying the personalities out there that are in high positions of leadership that, you know, they're getting sabotaged in the weirdest ways by not just individuals, but entire countries or news stations coming after them type of thing. And them just staying unshakable on the ladder. Like what do they have that can still be learned and, uh, figuring out how to acquire that and putting it in book form. I feel like, uh, you're in a good place to be doing research on that. Yeah, that's for sure. We'll go back to talking about like, um, like Elon, for example, that's a great one. Right. Um, just like you said, he's got new stations. He's got entire uh, countries kind of downplaying what he's doing. Including his and that's own. Exactly, that's exactly what we were just talking about of, um, oh, yeah, he's real successful. Oh, he's got this huge Tesla. Oh, he's got boring company. Oh, he's got SpaceX. But he's just this or, oh, he's just that. Well, I mean, you're throwing away everything that he is doing um, to be successful so that you can um, not admire him. Right. And then in addition to all the things he's doing, he's also learned how to remain unshakable. And so what does it take to be in that position? I don't know. I'm working to find it out right now. Because yeah. to tell you the truth, this when this last week, when this happened, okay, I'll tell you kind of the story of how it happened. I, was, I went to a wedding. I went to my my good friend's wedding, we were in high school together, we went into the military together, we were in the oil field together. So we've known each other for a long time. And we've had some tough, awesome experiences together. And I was at his wedding, I've been looking forward to this wedding for about a, you know, six months. I'm really excited to go be there. I get to see some family, some old friends from high school, I get to see his parents, that I haven't seen in forever. <clears throat> the day I get there, I get this text from a, a my partner, my business partner. And we're right now like expanding our business together. So we're kind of in like a, a phase where he's deciding if he wants to go to the next step with me. He's deciding, do I want to involve myself more with this person? And he gets a text saying, hey, I'm about to tell everybody on your Facebook that this person that you're looking to get more involved with is a crook and a thief and um, you know a bunch of lies. And so I wasn't unshakable. Yeah. Um, I guess, how did I, the first day when it happened, I was just, I was pretty much an emotional mess. I wasn't, and I, here I am at this wedding. Here I am able to enjoy myself. I'm at an event that I've been looking forward to for a long time. And I was just completely letting it um, just destroy my entire weekend is what, is what I was on the path to. Right. And I just had to, uh, I'm trying to think through the mental process I went through. And I kind of let go of the results and said, well, if that happens that way, that happens that way. Um, I guess it goes back to kind of responsibility. I'm going to take responsibility to have a good time now and enjoy myself. There's nothing I can do about it right this second anyway, for one. There's nothing I can really do about it right this second. And so... I don't, I don't, I don't really know exactly. I'm going to have to really do some thinking on what I did and how I, how I mentally worked through that. Looks like you can write chapter one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's going to take me a minute to figure it out. I'll just write that down. Yeah. It, it'd be incredible to see. Uh, so now imagining you're on every single news station as a terrible crook or a terrorist looking to start a nuclear war. And you're just like, I'm not trying to go to war. <laughs> Um, and it's just the whole world's out to get you, but it doesn't even shake you. Um, I mean, that's just going out to the extreme of it, but mm -hmm. there are leaders out there that, um, it doesn't bother them and it's, they're just staying true to the path they're on and their culture. And man, what, what a cool quality to figure out how to have. Yeah. I think one of the things that I can, uh, that I can think of is I, I knew I was, I was just kept telling myself, well, that's, that's a lie. That's not mm. the truth. So eventually the truth will come out. The truth will, you know, people will know that that's a lie. And I'm sure that that's one of the things that they do is they just say, well, that's, that's not the truth. And I'm not going to be distracted by that. I think another thing is I got, I got immediately like distracted. 
And that's all I could think about. I couldn't focus on anything else. I wasn't working on my business all day. I wasn't, um, you know, just being the person that is the successful person that I am. Um, You know, you know what else is the next day, I kind of made a decision that night after I'd kind of had one bad day. And I made the decision, you know what, I'm not just going to give up all my habits, my routines. So um, some of the things I've been doing is I, um, about two months ago, I wrote a love letter to myself from a year from now. And I had a friend suggest this. And he said, imagine it's one year from now. And everything that you're working on has succeeded. Write to yourself now, from then, write to yourself now, write to yourself Mm. in the past, a love letter. And it kind of sounded a love letter. Okay, whatever. And so I I did it, though. And I really put my heart into it and wrote myself a letter. And um, so now I read it every night and every morning. So first thing in the morning, I read it. And the last thing is I'm getting into bed, I read it. And also I wrote down, I'm, I'm working on 300 goals to ask God for. 300. Wow. Um, and so I'm about 127. And I've actually been working on this list for a long time. I've been working on this list for about a year and a half. And when I got to 70, I just, it took me, I was stuck at 70 for months, just to think of more things to ask God to put into my life. And so I'm being able to add one or two every day now because I'm making it consistent. Well, I'm reading Atomic Habits. So that's, that's getting me more into the consistent habits of every day doing it and getting that compound interest of my habits. Hmm. James Clear says in that book, have you read it, Atomic Habits? Oh, uh, yeah. It's a really good one. So one of the things he says is he goes, if you're, um, oh, I'm going to forget, I'm going to mess up the quote now, but he says, uh, time will be on your side if you're using good habits and it will be your enemy if you're using bad habits because you're, your habits compound and they add up over time. You know, 30 days of meditating is of meditating straight every day is an amazing um, kind of goalpost to hit. And you get to 25 and you don't do it for two days and it completely destroys everything. It's, it's, it's all the way back down to zero. Interesting. Yeah. So these habits really get to, you know, a year of meditating every single day straight is just a phenomenal difference in your life versus I meditated for a week and, you know, I do it pretty much two or three days a week or something like that. But every single day I read my love letter. First thing, every single night I read my love letter before I go to sleep. And I'll tell you something kind of uh, personal that it happened because of that. I hadn't had dreams in a long time, nighttime dreams where I dream Mm -hmm. at night. I hadn't been having them for years. I just hadn't been having them. And about a month ago, I started having every morning at about four o'clock in the morning, I wake up in a terrible mood because I was, I wasn't having like nightmares. I was just having bad dreams, like just, just bad, weird kind of like just bad things happening, like uh, nothing horrific or terrifying or any kind of nightmares that is what I would call it, but just bad. And I'd wake up and just feel like physically bad, like, like almost sick like just kind of achy and my head wasn't really clear. And it was taking me pretty much half of the day through, through my habits of getting like kind of getting going. And I was really kind of feeling bogged down. Um, and so I started this habit of reading that love letter and my 300 goals. Uh, it's not to 300 yet, but I'm about halfway there of getting 300 written but reading that every single night and every single morning. And I started realizing on the nights when I wasn't doing that, I would wake up feeling that terrible in the morning and I was having these bad dreams. And this has pretty much taken away my bad dreams. There's a habit that through compounding it, doing it every day, every night has taken away that negative feeling. So now I wake up and I mean, I've talked about it plenty on here that I wake up early and I get started with my habits and I have plenty of habits in the morning and I've gotten rid of that grogginess, that, that kind of, I don't really know what I'm doing. I don't feel that great. I don't feel that confident. And like I found myself when I, when I wasn't doing my habits, 
kind of walking around my room in the morning. Like I'd be up and I'd be like, well, I don't really know what to do. I, I just kind of was like, uh, kind of thinking over here, thinking over there and nothing was focused. Nothing was, this is what I need to do. As soon as I start my habits, I wake up and I know exactly what I need to do every day. I know exactly what's what's on my schedule is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to get up and I'm, I'm going to read, I'm going to meditate, I'm going to take my shower. You know what I mean? I'm going to have my little routine and it's way easier. Um, okay, so routines stack on top of each other hmm. and taking one out kind of crumbles the rest of them too. So as soon so as I stop, yeah, yeah. As soon as I stopped uh, doing the positive, all the other positives kind of got weaker. That one part, reading that love letter before I go to sleep, reading that love letter first thing every morning, it, it became kind of like the bottom of the pyramid, so to speak. And everything's built up on top of that. So you start pulling out the pieces at the bottom and everything else gets weaker and starts to crumble. Then the other habits don't really even have it as positive effect. They, they get supercharged by other habits, like those foundational habits, which is every single day, every day, every time I wake up, every time before I go to sleep, those are the foundational ones. And so all the other ones, they're built on top of that. And they lose a ton of strength if you take out the bottom ones. I almost wonder if uh, taking out the bottom ones, it's because you're replacing them with bad habits. It's just not being done intentionally. So you don't even realize that there's new habits coming in that are uh, kind of counteracting the good ones. Yeah, I didn't want to talk about those, but yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what's happening. Right. Because I'm just sitting there, you know what I'm doing instead? Um, the the I didn't have that hard of a time in the morning doing it because I just woken up feeling bad. And so I felt like I needed to do something good. But at night, if I felt like I had had a good day, I was, um, I'll tell you what I was, I was just laying in bed watching TV. Yep. And instead of, instead of reading my love letter, you know, instead of meditating in the morning, it's like meditating while looking at a bad text. It's like, okay, you're (laughs) meditating on bad things versus, uh, being intentional about what your habits are. Yeah. And then I tell you what, uh, that's that's losing control for real yeah like not controlling that time in the morning not controlling what i look at first thing in the morning how i'm thinking first thing in the morning and really here's another part of that uh that list of 300 things i'm asking god for that's i'm already thanking him for having that because i know he's already giving it to me he's giving it to me now yeah just because i don't you know i we think of things as i have it in my life well, you have it, you're, you're having it in your life. I don't know if that makes sense the way that I'm saying it, Yeah. but um, it's not that you're going to have it someday in your life. You have it now, whatever it is that you want in your life, you have it now. You're, you're, you're in the having of it. You're in the process of having, it. that's what it is. We're in the process of having these things that we think are far away. We, we, we kind of like, think of them as being something we're going towards and moving towards, but really we have them now. They're inside of us. They wouldn't be in our minds if God didn't already give it to us. Yeah. If it wasn't already there and available for us, it, it, it wouldn't be in our minds at all. I just opened a business account at a new bank and made a deposit and it's like, cool, I made the deposit. I have the money. And they're like, yeah, you won't have a release on it for 25 days. And I'm like, oh my gosh. (laughs) So I, I have the money. I just can't uh, pull anything out for a month. So yeah. it's kind of similar. Yeah, you're in the process of having it. Yeah. And so it's only yours to mess up. Yeah. It's only ours to, once we ask for it, when we tell God, this is what we want. Cool. He, he's giving it to us. You're in the process of receiving it. And so it's only us to change our mind to say, oh, well, it took too long. I guess I'm not going to have it. And so now we take ourselves out of the process of receiving. Mm -hmm. You know, and I keep talking about God. You know, we can can call God whatever we want. I think that throws a lot of people off when we talk about, we say God, because it it confuses. You know, people are like, well, I'm not that religious. Well, so what? So what? You're not religious. So what? You're not going to take the 
the idea and use it. You know, you're not going to take this idea and let it benefit you because you don't believe in God. Well, okay. That's your responsibility, I guess. But, um, you know, it's my responsibility to communicate it in a, in a positive way, right? In a way that people can understand. So um, we could call it whatever we want, the universe, power, whatever it is that created us or whatever it is that unites us all. That thing that unites us, we ask for it. And as soon as we ask for it, we become in the process of receiving it. And it's only our own actions that take us out of the process of receiving it. Yeah, that's so interesting. Because we can very easily, that's, that's what a lot of times for me is like, it took too long. It takes so long and, and then you, you just stop being in the process of receiving it. Well, being in the process is steps along the path of things I do to receive that goal I set, that gift I want to receive from God. They're the same thing. It's the goal I set in the future is asking God for something. It's those, those are the same things. They're just different words to describe the same thing. And so if I take myself out of the process of going to receive it, of being the, the one that receives it, I'm the one who took myself out of the process. I'm the one who quit. It's interesting, even with the taking too long, it's like, well, whose fault is it that it took too long? And I'm like looking back at parts of my life where it's like, well, yeah, I made it take longer, but it's because otherwise the other monkeys would have pulled me down for going up too quick. And it's like, okay, well, it was your choice to get pulled down. And it was your choice to extend the date of when you'd receive it. So you're not offending the other monkeys, essentially. And it's, yeah, it, it's interesting how we are the only thing limiting ourselves. Yeah, we are. Yeah, you have a you have such a sweet way of of dealing with people. And it um, it's exactly what you were just talking about. You don't want to offend the other monkeys. And so you're willing to put your own receiving to a later date. Which doesn't and... help anyone. <laughs> no, no, I don't think it does. Yeah. Well, those monkeys get to still be just as unhappy as they were. Instead of looking at it one day admiring you. Right. You know? Well, they got and one actually, more monkey to hang out with, so. Yeah. <laughs> you and me and the monkeys and the ladders. Yep, for sure. That's good. Hmm. So uh, this will probably be a podcast then? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's great. I'll put some music on this. And um, like I said, I just wanted to talk with you about it and flush out ideas. I love it. Um, I, You've been, I think uh, it's another good habit to have even once a week, once a month, just to kind of still have uploads here and there. Yeah. So I have taken quite a bit of a break and, and that was, um, you know, I didn't feel comfortable. I didn't feel like I, I had yeah. this relationship that split up and I felt like, oh, well, who am I to give any advice? Who am I to talk about this or talk about that? Well, I'm, I'm the one who's going through it. And so I'll share it. And Man, if it helps one person, dang, watching yeah. a bunch of videos online helped me to get to where I am now. Yep. So it's only right of me to keep helping anybody else who can take anything from what I'm saying. To sharing see the that, journey. Uh, yeah, sharing the journey. What do they say? Document the journey, right? That's good. <laughs> so here we are, documenting the journey. I just noticed I'm wearing my blessed shirt. Can you see it on oh, the nice. camera? Yeah, I, I see that all around everywhere. Is that a local company or who makes that? Yeah, it's a it's a local company. I'm pretty sure they're in Oahu. Okay. And that's where I got it was was over there in Oahu on um I'm trying to think. It must have been Ala Moana at the shopping center. We had a little trip over there this last year and I saw the shirt. And so I guess if you look real close, you can see on the, the crown part, it's two people praying. Oh, interesting. See the one person? And the two people praying together creates the other person. Okay. And that's kind of what we're doing right now. You know, exchanging these ideas, talking about becoming better people. And it seems so weird to talk about, like, I'm becoming a better person. But that's what it's really about. Do you want something? Okay, we'll become worthy of that. Yep. Or recognize that you're worthy of it. 
and it's not through performance or anything like that. Yeah. Recognizing it. Yeah, that's really good. Well, let's see. I guess we can go ahead and wrap it up. We've talked for a little bit. I didn't want to talk forever. But like I said, I just kind of wanted to bounce that off you and, and get your initial reaction to it. And um, I love it. I, I think it'll be a good episode. Do you want to do like an outro for it? Yeah. Why don't I let you talk at the end? Oh, I still got to practice. You're the radio show host. <laughs> well, you know, it all comes back to what responsibility are we willing to take? We can look in the mirror and recognize that we deserve the things that we want, the things that we say are our goals. Or we can look in the mirror and say, we don't deserve that. The choice is completely ours. We have responsibility and ability, you know, our response is our responsibility. And so we can take that responsibility and we can achieve the things we want and we can be receiving what we want, or we can just let it pass us by. I hope that anybody that's listening takes the responsibility. Look in the mirror and take the responsibility. Be the one who it's all because of me, because yeah, it is. You are, you are in the process of receiving the goals that you set because you've already asked for them and you can receive them. So I'm here in Texas, so I'll say aloha and howdy. <laughs> or we'll see y'all later. And aloha. Bye, y'all. Bye, Michael.